I've been using the same brewing software to design literally hundreds of recipes, but I kept hearing the same advice over and over again. You really should switch to Brewfather. You really should switch to Brewfather. Now here at Brewlosophy, Brewfather is the brewing software that we all use. And since I've started to use it, you know what? I'm really starting to like it. I can use it on my phone, tablet or computer. It looks the same on every device. It's all cloud-based and not a hop pellet yeast cell or grain of barley passes through my basement brewery without being logged in the Brewfather inventory. And I've only scratched the surface. But fortunately, Brewlosopher contributor Ryan is a Brewfather pro. And in this, the first in a series of Brewfather tutorials, Ryan walks through the basics of navigating the software. And look, just in this demo alone, I learned a whole bunch of new features that I had no idea existed. I'm Martin Keane, and this is The Brewlosophy Show. We've had a plethora of uh, software solutions available to us for the last 10 years or so. And uh, Beersmith comes to mind. The uh, Brew and Water spreadsheet is another tool for our water salts. In my opinion, um, as soon as I started using Brewfather, I realized all of those handy tools are now all in one. And uh, one thing that I really love about it is that it's cross-platform very seamlessly. So I can plan a recipe on my computer go open up my iPad in the brewery. Um, I always have my recipes handy with me on my phone and it's just it's just a very seamless and user-friendly experience. And there's a lot of stuff that cluttered up the other softwares that made it very complicated and kind of daunting to learn. With this one, it pretty much just pairs it down to the real stuff that you really, really need. So you're seeing me log into my own account here when you get into brewfather.app, you have the main website and that's where you can create a user profile by your premium access or just get the free one. And so I'm in the premium one. We're just gonna go down the different options over here. Let's keep it pretty high level for this one. We'll get into some of the nuances later about creating an actual profile or uh, building a recipe. We're gonna go through those together later, but for now, I'm just gonna walk you through the different tabs. So. Right up top, we've got recipes. So these are all recipes that I have saved, uh, stolen, borrowed, had sent to me. And this is some, this is my personal library. Um, up here are the ones that I pulled from Brewfather's own repertoire. And down here are all of the ones that I've uh, custom built over time or I've taken and duplicated and tweaked a little bit. And it just gives me super easy access to that. So I'm just gonna open uh the top one just for grins to show you what an actual recipe looks like again we're going to get into this later but um this particular recipe is an ipa that i was brewing on a 10 barrel batch see the batch volume is 310 proving that you can use the software on any size system so i'm going to close this and just keep going down the list of tabs over here so the next tab is called batches and so this is not a feature that i use all the time because for home brewing we kind of just look at our recipe and know when we do our hop additions um, this would be when you actually run a recipe and it runs the timers for you it gives you alarms when you need to add hop additions or raise temperatures if you're doing step mashes for example super handy especially um, on the pro brewing side so again, these are batches that have actually run. One thing that this would allow is for on the go notes for the individual brew days. Um, say I'm gonna make the same Bubba's Porter, for example, 10 times, and I'm always gonna change something and I wanna note all the individual, re the, the, the readings for that day. Um, I would do it on this batches. So again, I don't use this option very much, but some people do. Inventory, this is a cool one. Um, inventory is basically how much stuff you have on hand. So again, this is kind of something that a home brewer may or may not use. Uh, I could definitely see this being handy for a uh, pro brewery. So they could go in as they're crafting a recipe and say, how much two row do I have? How many Amarillo pellets do I have? And they could just go in and see those numbers and keep track of those. And when you run a batch, it's going to automatically take those ingredients out of your inventory 
So when you're running low, it you already know, and it's all tied in together and seamless. The next tab, we've got library. This is one of my favorite features, especially for homebrewers just starting out. If you've ever wondered where to get recipes, this is it. So if you want to clone a Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, let's just up at the top, or you want, let's just type something in, something random. Let's do a, a Baltic Porter. So you can see here, we've got well, dozens of recipes coming up. The top 12 that I'm looking at are all Baltic porters. You can get inspiration from them. This is such a wonderful tool. You also see the how many people have downloaded it, how many people have looked at it, how many people have liked it. Um, again, with the recipes, you can see who made it, uh, what efficiency they were using, and so you can kind of compare and bring that into your own setup. Again, we're going to get into the, the profiles um, for your brewing equipment next, but essentially Brewfather will be able to scale it based on their notes and the, the recipe and the system that they used, and it will translate that, it will translate the numbers into things that are useful for you so that you can scale a recipe uh, pretty easily, which is a pretty amazing thing. So I'm going to just point out right here, Pliny the Elder, if you have a hard time getting Russian River beer where you're at, Make your own. Look how many people downloaded it. 5,278 today. I'll bet it's uh, thousands upon thousands of people are using that same recipe, and it's wonderful. So um, I'm just going to jump into the next one, too. So profiles. This is really important, and uh, we will get back to this at a future time, but essentially profiles is how you're going to train the software to know your brew house. So I'm just going to click into this one. Right now we've got equipment, mash, fermentation, water, and then custom styles. Um, let's just keep it simple and high level for this one. So if I jump into equipment, you're going to see all of the different um, brew house profiles that you can already download. So most of the main systems that are on the market, so we've got Spike Solo, for example, that, that's pretty new on the market. Um, You've got the Green Fathers in here, the Easy Brews, um, all the different models, the Brewzillas, so the Robo Brew, if you've ever seen those, both the 35 and 65. You can just jump in here and tell the software what system you're using, and it's going to automatically know what the efficiency is, um, the power that you're using, so it knows a general estimate of the boil-off rate, for example, what the line loss is. So if you're using a three-vessel a three um, rims system and there's line loss or whatever, whatever the numbers are, it's going to come in here. So the important thing to remember about this is that your profile is going to directly affect the predicted numbers that come out. So if you know how much water you're supposed to add for the specific recipe, you're targeting an OG. Um, that's how it backs into that math. And so no equipment profile is going to be perfect. The first time you run it, every brewery is just a little bit different. Your methods might be a little bit different. So it takes a little bit of time and a couple brew days to kind of dial this in. But this is how you find out what your efficiency is and if you want a 1070 OG it's going to calculate it's going to reverse engineer the numbers for you so that you know what water how much water to add and uh, the such so that's the equipment profile um, again I'll point out that this can be used for uh, pro brewers and home brewers alike it's very much the first thing that you should tackle when you get into brew father uh, the next is training it how you use your equipment. So this is an example of medium fermentability. That's my starred profile here, for example. So that's the default that it always pulls up. So as it's calculating attenuation of the yeast or it's going to um, predict my final gravity after fermentation, that kind of all plays into this. And so you can even do protein rests or plan it and add a profile and do step mashes and things like that. And so that's telling it what the mash is. Almost everything that I do is at 152. Um, sometimes I'll veer north or south by two degrees, but 
uh, general medium fermentability is pretty good for almost anything that home brewers are making these days. Fermentation, this is the profile that you're going to tell it uh, for how you're going to ferment. So here you've got Kvik, for example, or a lager, so the cold temperatures. Um, I've got a couple different options here. The ale temperature, 68. Again, this is going to tell the software what my final gravity is going to be based on the kind of yeast that I pick. So it's very, very intuitive. Um, and I found um, pretty, uh, pretty accurate too. So if I were to have a fermentation profile in here and I wanted to customize that, if you were doing, uh, telling it when you're going to cold crash and all of that stuff, you could put it in right here. I don't overthink this step. I just roll with it, but it is there if you want it. Next is our water profile. And so if you are just starting out with home brewing, everybody tells you the, the old adage, um, if the water tastes good to drink, it's good to brew with. Well, I think we've debunked that one pretty well at Brewlosophy and have discovered that uh, your water profile can dictate a whole lot of things. Everything from the color to the haziness or clarity, uh, hoppiness, all of, all of the variables can be done in here. And so uh, a great place to start for folks is, um, I mean, reverse osmosis or uh, distilled water. So from the big jugs, it's pretty easy to get into that. This is one of the most powerful tools in Brewfather. This is what this got me really excited when I first started using it. Um, there's other tools and calculators out there that are very, very complicated. But for this, I, you, inside the recipe, you're going to tell it your starting water profile. So in my case, I almost always use reverse osmosis these days. I just tell reverse osmosis and then I go in and I pick my target profile. And so you see right here all of the different uh, target profiles that you can pick from and you can add them. Say, uh, I don't do this, but some people use location stuff. So if you want to do an, a dry Irish stout, right, you're looking for uh, the water that they would have had in Ireland. So um, that's just one example. But here, for example, if I want balanced or if I'm doing an American lager or an amber strong, hoppy, hoppy light, hoppy New England IPA, it's going to pick that target profile. And later when we're building a recipe, I'll show you how to do this, but you just hit auto and it's going to generate those numbers for you. And it's going to tell you exactly how much gypsum, how much calcium chloride, how much Epsom salt, whatever, whatever is needed to modify your water. Um, if you're not using reverse osmosis, it's pretty easy to add your own profile. So if you go out and send your water off to a lab, say Ward Labs, or you have your water tested, or you get that from your local water, um, the, the water folks from your city. Um, you can just add that profile in here. It's pretty straightforward. Um, again, you've got your calcium chloride, magnesium, sodium chloride, sulfate, bicarbonate, the usual suspects. You just type those numbers in here and hit save and you can name it and you are good to go. Now you've got a, now you've got a uh, starting source water profile. So as you see in here, I've got several ones, say they were dated from the, the place where I was at when I was brewing. Um, so that was their custom water at the time. So it was different between 15 February and December, um, just a little bit, but you can see, for example, that those water salt additions would have been different. So the water profile is super, uh, straightforward to get into. And it's one of my favorite tools of Brewfather. Next is one of the most powerful tools. This is the styles tab. We start at 07 beer with alt beer, and they are in alphabetical order. You uh, can rearrange them and sort them in the order that you want, but basically any style that the BGCP guidelines have is in here. And it's in my, I've never noticed one be off or outdated. And so if I want to br uh, brew a British golden ale for uh, homebrew con coming up, I just come in here and find British golden ale um on recipes that's the repertoire of other people's recipes for this but this is going to tell me exactly what the vitals are for this particular beer according to the bjcp so what the expected og is um what the ibus or srm the the category that it's in 
Um, and it has the specific notes. It tells you what kind of hops are usually used, um, what the appearance is supposed to be. All of the vitals for that beer are in here. Uh, most pro brewers, when they're dialing in their system, they will start out by just looking at the percentages on here. So it tells you this much pale malt, this much um, specialty grains. Here's like common practices for this style. And that's like your starting platform for basically any kind of beer that you want to make. Just make it according to this and then you can tweak it over time. Um, it's This is an amazing repertoire. Obviously, these recipes are on the BJCP guidelines as well. You can download their uh, spreadsheet for free at bjcp.com or org. But it's handy to have this in your pocket. So if anybody ever says like, oh, what about this kind of, what's, what's a goes? Uh, you can just hop in here and sound like a super nerd on the spot at the bar. And you're talking about a style that you maybe know nothing about. But now you have the tool in your pocket all the time. So um, there's a cool little trick for you to sound cool on untapped. Um, not much else to say on this one. So we are moving on. We're rounding this out. We've got tools. This is where all of your brewing calculations, um, your gravity collections, refractometer, uh, pitch rate if you do starters still, which you should not because everybody should be using imperial yeast. Um, we are here. So this is, this is where you tell it how many gallons you're going to make. Here it's defaulting to 310 because that's the recipe that I had pulled up last. But basically it's going to tell you how many, how many, uh, yeast cells you need for the target pitch rate and all of those things. So that's just the pitch rate. Uh, alcohol attenuation. This is where I would go in. Super simple calculator. If I've got a 1070 OG and I finished at 1011, it calculates it right there. I've got a 7.7% percent uh, beer on my hands and it does translate it to Play-Doh. So you've got all of your, all the numbers that you could want in here. Oh, even how many carbs per 12 ounce pours. I just noticed that. I've never used that before. It's pretty cool. Um, the other tools that are in here, we've got refractometer. So this is like to translate between bricks and uh, FG. Gravity corrections. These are, I don't use most of these uh, alcohol and attenuations, usually the biggest one, but we do have carbonation charts. So how many volumes of CO2 you need for the volume of final beer that you have and the temperature correction, what type of carbonation you're doing. So if it's force, it's going to tell you what PSI to run at. It's, this is really, really cool. And again, it's just a, it's such an excellent tool, one-stop shop for not just somebody learning, but to use, like this is everything that you need. Um, even mash strike temperature calculators. So if you don't have the ability to control your temperature during the mash, for example, that's where this comes in. You want your strike water to be at a certain temperature for your mash to run at 152, for example. It'll tell you what that strike temperature needs to be before you go in, based on how many grains you have and all of that. Um, and then the last one is settings. In here, you can just switch around, obviously, your default language if you want to use uh, gravity or Play-Doh. Oh, um, Here's one of the power ups. So this is this is a really cool feature on the on the premium subscription. So I can tie into the brew tools controller. Um, I do have tilt hydrometers, so I can track my fermentation directly from Brewfather. Um, it ties into all of these other things like the Play-Doh keg. So I'm assuming that goes into my inventory. Um, the floaty hydrometer. All of these things. These are super cool tools. If you're using them, it looks to me like. Not much is missing here, so it's very, very comprehensive. The rest just seem to be basic, um, I guess, the, the software settings that you can select. So the important ones here are if you're in Europe and you're using um, Celsius instead of Fahrenheit, this is where you would go to do that. Um, it, so, yeah, for example, standard ABV versus alternative, things like that. So. All right, friends, so next time on the next video, we're going to talk about equipment profiles and I will show you the exact profile that I use and how to build one from scratch. Um, these are the features that we're kind of going to go over. It's going to do everything from your uh, 
desired volume into the fermenter, what your boil off rates and all of those kind of fun things. And then we're going to jump straight into building a recipe from scratch on that profile. And so you're going to see how the system profile will affect the final results and the calculations as you're building your recipe. But it's really cool. You're going to see uh, live color adjustments, what the gravity adjustments are. And so you can really dial in a recipe uh, to exactly what you're looking for. But step one is this equipment profile. So stay tuned for next time. Hmm? Switch to Brewfather, you must. Hmm? Oh, hello. You really should switch to Brewfather. Switch to Brewfather! Go now! Uh, yeah, you really should switch to Brewfather. Eh?